Household financial wellness is improving, but uh, South Africans need, to, need support to design their financial futures proactively. Momentum and the University of South Africa released their annual Household Financial Wellness Index. The report shows that South Africans have made good progress post-pandemic towards improving their financial situations and they are keen to achieve financial success, but they need to know how. Charlotte Nsubuga Mukasa, Momentum Head of Marketing Brand, joins us now this morning to give some insights and tips on how consumers can safely guide their financial wellness in 2023. A very good morning to you, Charlotte. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Cynthia, it's so nice to finally meet you. It's so good to be here. I feel, I feel at home. Right? I feel at home, yeah. That's the whole point. You need to feel at home. Yeah. So that you can be relaxed and uh, we get to talk about the most pertinent stuff, like household yes. wellness and household uh, finances. So finances. Uh, uh, what's the current state of South Africa? Africa's or South Africans financial wellness. Well, just to give some context to the viewers at home, uh, Momentum has been in partnership with UNISA for 11 years. Yes. And for 11 years, we have gone across the country, we've canvassed it and found the poorest of homes to the most wealthiest of homes, 2,500 households every year for 11 years to find out how financially well South Africans are or how we're tracking. Mm -hmm. So the good news story is that we have improved our financial wellness score. And I say good news because in 2018, we were sitting at 65%. Mm -hmm. The score is out of 100 and then we dropped because of COVID, but we also dropped because of a, a lot of other things like load shedding, unemployment. Yes. In fact, when we did the study, the July riots were happening. So there yes. was an impact to the economy and there's so many other things. Business confidence was low. So when we looked at the indices in 2021 and we saw the improvement from 65% uh, to 67%, we said that's a good news story that South Africa needs to hold on to. So, I mean, but all things- what could have possibly contributed to this improvement? I mean, the cost of living is ridiculously high no, it and is. It there's no- sign that it might be slowing down a bit. No, it is. I mean, just look at the price of milk. You know, they call it the basket of goods per se. Yes. But the interesting thing about the indices is that we are earning more income as South Africans. Our personal empowerment is improving in terms of the country's self-esteem. However, mm -hmm. um, education and financial literacy remains on an all-time low. Okay. Skills and qualifications aren't necessarily improving. Well, we weren't studying as much during COVID-19. So there are many other factors that have brought the indices down, but there are also other factors that has, have improved the indices. Right. So our um, South Africans are saying, I am willing to go and partner with a financial institution to help me further my financial goals or I'm forced to get into the side hustle economy and that's where the gold lies. Aha, yeah. aha. That's my next question, yes. that's my next point. I mean, what have you uh, realized in terms, I mean, wh when you are conducting this survey or the study, yes. what are the common trends? Is it debt or is it, sure. uh, you know, the failure to service debt? You know what, it's both. <clears throat> People, South Africans are highly indebted. We know that in terms of countries, we're not the most, uh, we're not known for saving. Mm -hmm. um, and it, we're also, when we check the indices, we realize that from uh, children to adulthood, as we grow, we have the worst indices when it comes to actually understanding how to set financial goals. We don't have the skill to sit with our kids around the dinner table and actually say, this household needs to improve, or we need to take our first child to Wits or Harvard. We don't have the skills to actually visualize the dream and then go to goals and then to do budget planning but the but the good news is because we're forced into the side hustle economy we're finding that people are doing you know a lot of uh, partnering with people like Avon yes. selling jewelry uh, baking goods and they're not afraid to have a professional job and to be able to go and let's say have a grass cutting company over uh -huh. the weekend so people's status you know the thing of holding on to I'm a doctor I'm a this I need to hold on to that people are now becoming flexible to say I can actually be educated and have a side hustle because I don't have sure. enough to actually make this household float during uh, macroeconomic conditions such as COVID you know the outside factors that ho hold us back from controlling our money moves in our household so you know there's a bit of a yin and yang happening at the same time there's there's good and bad news but overall the indices is showing progress and improvement but it's also showing that we're becoming more self-reliant on ourselves and True. instead of looking to government for everything or institutions and or other. You know Charlotte we can never overemphasize the importance of having a side hustle because I know one particular household uh, their side hustle is much bigger than their actual salaries. See, so when are they leaving? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you there? That's what I'm asking myself. I love hearing stories like that because I really believe in being independent. Yes. I have no issue with people being salaried. I am salaried myself. Mm -hmm. But my dream is to be able to take my passion and commercialize it. Right. I mean, isn't that your dream to take uh, your passion and then commercialize sure. it a across sure. a variety of talents? Because human beings are complex. We don't just love one thing. Mm -hmm. To be fulfilled 
skilled, we need to be able to commercialize all our talents. But that skill needs to start at home. And this is why I'm pushing for the education system to teach our children how to financially plan, budget principles, but goal setting. If we can talk about sex education, when they're in primary school, in a fit-for-purpose manner, in an appropriate manner, depending on the age, why are we not teaching them how to make money moves in the household? How on earth are we going from to From the change? elementary yeah. stage, yeah. From the elementary stage, it makes no sense to me. Goal setting isn't umama no dada. Goal mm. setting starts in, I want a toy, how do I get that toy? Yes. Do I understand the trade-offs? Do I understand if I'm a teenager in the household, my part in contributing to making sure that that household is financially savvy, yes. whether we have the money or not, because we all have to contribute if not money but at least our IP our skills and our talents and we found that those South Africans who are financially well not necessarily rich Mm -hmm. There is a difference. You find rich people who are highly indebted that are just not making means because of how they're spending their money. And you find people who are, let's say, poorer, who are able to stand the test of time and who are stable because they stick to their vision and their goals. But they also have a financial advisor, or if not a financial advisor, an accountability partner in terms of your husband who says, listen, out of love, what, uh, what you're doing in terms of the money. But is how is a household back. deemed uh, financially secure, financially well? I'm so glad you asked. So we use five factors. Uh -huh. uh, in terms of determining what a household is that is financially well versus financially distressed. There's a difference uh -huh. and there's, there's, a, difference, a, there's yes. a range, there's a range. You can be rich and be financially distressed. So we basically look at your income, the income and expenses in your household. Mm -hmm. We look at your living conditions, the state and the quality of your household. We look at education and not because you are degreed, you can have no degree and no diploma, but be skilled. So we look at the skill in the household. We look at, you know, personal empowerment because we've realized that the lower the self-esteem of that household, the less the probability of them to actually make money. Yeah. So also, do they understand where to access capital when, in a, in a good way that doesn't make them get into unnecessary debt? That is a factor, personal empowerment. Right, right. And then the last one is your net worth, your assets, your liabilities. Because let's be frank, uh, some of us have made bad money moves, myself included in the past. And it actually has a long-term effect on that household. So how are you going back to either fix or address the, the loan that you shouldn't have taken that was unnecessary? Or in your 20s, you know, the credit cards that you were maxing that you've now got to go and fix now that you're married or now that you're having children. So, okay. yeah. How does a lack of goal setting and lack of planning, you know, contribute to financial illiteracy in South Africa? And we're out of time. Sure. Just be, be financial as brief literacy. As possibly so, can. if you are not financially li literate, when you are given a, an opportunity to get debt, you go to loan sharks, you're not able to verify or ratify whether the interest rate that you're being afforded mm. is fair and transparent, and you stay in debt longer. Instead of mm. being there for 20 years, you end up being there for 40, which is double the time. Gosh, Charlotte. This is uh, very interesting, but scary at the same time. It's very, uh, yes. But remember, it's still a good <laughs> All right, story. thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> thank you. All right, we just spoke to Charlotte Tinsibuga Mukasa, Momentum Head of Marketing Brand on the general state of South Africa's uh, household financial wellness.